about base coating today and we're going to begin with some a wood surface. One thing I want to point about when you're working with um, these birch panels or even masonite, um, make sure that you're going to work with the best side of it. So if you look at this, you can see that there's it's been spliced with some little wooden disc. So that's the least preferable side because it would really be hard to get rid of the ridges and things on this side. Let's post this. This is nice and smooth. Now I've already prepped it with sealer and I've sanded it. And the one thing I want to do is I want to make sure it, to come in very lightly and make sure that there's absolutely no debris anywhere. I also will wipe off my palette paper, especially if it's been sitting out. Because if you get any debris on your palette paper, then your, those things, those little dust particles are going to show up on here and they're going to look like big blobs. The other thing I want to talk about is the paint that you're going to use. I mark my paint bottles either with the date or this has an N on it. You want to make sure that you're working with newer paint when you're base coating because otherwise you're going to get little um, globs of paint. You also want to shake the bottle so that it's nice and smooth and rich like over here. You don't want to have like um, the binder off to one side. You want to make sure that it's all one solid form. And I want to begin by talking about base coating with a brush. Um, this is my preference. I really like to use brushes. But a little hint that I like to give you to keep the brush fairly clean, because you can see I've got a lot of stuff here, but the hairs are fairly clean, is this is extender. And so I dip this into the brush and just kind of work it into the um, bottom part. And then I rinse it. What this does is it acts like a conditioner, and so then the extender is going to be down here, and if some of the paint creeps up during the base coating process, it will be easier to wash it out. I generally will do this before I float too, but I want to make sure I get all the extender out of here because I don't want um, it to take a long time to dry. So then when I load my brush, I come in and I pull off the side of the puddle. I don't want to load it so I have a glob on like this. I just want a nice even load and I want the brush, the shape of the brush to pretty much return to its normal shape. Then I come over and I will leave my, the tip of my brush up. And I work quickly, pulling towards me. But the reason I'm not getting globs on my surface is because my brush did not have too much paint on. If I come in, can you see how heavy that is and see how it's building the ridges? We don't want that when we're base coating because once it dries, you can't get rid of it. Now, can you also see that there's a little, I call this a little paint booger, uh, it's some debris that got picked up somewhere. So you can just take the corner of your brush and try to lift that out. It was probably when I picked up too much paint. So I'm going to just work this out now very quickly. Oh, that doesn't want to come out. So now I've got to use my finger. But it looks like it might be something in the wood, which happens a lot. So I'm going to just finish this. And then when it, when it dries, then I'll just come back and sand it a little bit because at this point, I'm not going to wipe my paint off. So I'm going to work very quickly. Now one thing to note is when you're coming and you're end ending, I lift up my brush so that I don't get any paint on this side. Um, you don't want to have big blobs of paint on the edges of your panels because if you put it into a frame, it won't fit them. Now you notice I'm going back and forth. That's to make sure I'm getting it into the pores of the paint, uh, of the surface. Um, but then I have to very quickly go over it. And I'm using, when I'm going over it like this, I'm using ever so light of a touch. Now this is going to start drying fairly soon, so I really need to stay out of there. This is deco art paint, and it's fairly thick. So um, it's just wonderful. Look at how the coat I'm getting 
um, with just one application on this birch panel. So now I'm gonna, now I see some ridges because my brush was up. The way you get rid of ridges also, and when I work it out, my brush is laid back. It's on like a 30 degree angle. That really is what helps keep it, the, your paint nice and smooth. I'll go back and forth just a little bit. Okay, that looks really good. Then, if I'm in a hurry, I can actually take and blow dry it, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be back in a few seconds. I'm back, and it's been completely dried. I did sand over um, two of the little um, debris that I got on there. And I wanted to talk just a little bit about how you know whether or not your paint is dry. Um, and then also how I dried it. I came in with just a hair dryer. I've seen some beginning students who've come from paper crafting and decorative painting um, use the heat setting guns that they use for embossing. Those were actually created to lift paint up. So if you use those, you could actually form bubbles and ruin your surface. So always just use a hair dryer and keep it far away because the, the heat can form bubbles. But what you do is when you're um, drying your surface, and I don't have this on because obviously you wouldn't be able to hear me then, but when, I, when you're drying the surface, what you're doing is the paint will look wet and it will have a sheen to it. You can watch it and it will become all of a sudden matte um, in texture. And so you just kind of watch for the sheen to go away and then you touch it. If it still feels cool, you need to continue drying it. Right now, this feels like it's room temperature, so I know that it's completely dry. So, you can see that it has absolutely no ridges in it. It's nice and smooth and even. But you can see there's some areas in here where the background is showing. So I'm going to have to apply another coat, and I would do it the same way with my brush. But there's no brush strokes. There's, it's nice and smooth and even. We just need another coat on here. But what I wanted to talk about next is how to use a foam roller to base coat because this is a lot easier to use. Now, um, this is an older one and it's got a lot of debris on the head. So I'm going to take this off because I want to make sure that none of that um, drops into my um, surface. I have a newer roller here and it's a nice and clean so I want to use that. And again, this paint has been sitting here for a little, little while. I want to make sure I put out some nice fresh paint so that there's no debris in it. I do dampen the foam roller in water and then I just squeeze it out a little bit because I want this to be moist, not wet. Then I will load this up and I watch what I'm getting on my palette. If I'm getting too many bubbles, and that's what I have right there, I will just come and over to my a paper towel and blot because it means I have too much water in it. And those bubbles are going to show up on your surface. So let me put out some more paint since I just lifted most of that up. So I really like using the roller, but it does take a little bit of time to get used to it. So I've got a little bit of bubbles going here, but I think I'm going to be okay. So let's see what happens over here on the surface. Now it is bubbling, but I'm going to show you how to get rid of, and by bubbles, can you see what I mean? See those little bubbles building up? You don't want those, because if it dries like that, you'll have to really spend a lot of time sanding those off. So I just go back and forth, and I'm using a lot of pressure right now, making sure, once again, that I'm really pushing it onto the surface. I find this is so much easier um, than using a brush. But now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come in and use almost no pressure. I'll go back both ways. And what that is, that really helps eliminate all those little bubbles. So you can see we have no bubbles. We have a nice, even, smooth coverage of paint. And that's how you base coat a background. One thing I wanted to point out is just like with brushes, you don't want to let these rollers sit in water 
because if you do, they'll start rusting underneath. And when you go to roll them, they will not roll. And so it's very important to um, rinse them so your hands won't get all dirty like mine is. And then also um, then take it off Clean both sides, because you can see I have a lot of paint built up on here. And eventually, that will stop this from rolling. It won't spin anymore. And these will last a super long time, as long as you take care of them. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up by liking it. Also, please subscribe so that you can be notified when I do additional videos. My next video will be Base Coating Part 2, where I will be showing you how to base coat individual elements within a design. I'll see you there.